Today I'm going to be drawing. I'm not actually going to be drawing in copy line. I'm going to be just drawing. So, if you have a copy line book and you want to work in that, you totally can. All right. So, just going to set up a little bit. But uh, with me here. Today I'm going to be drawing. I'm not actually going to be drawing in copy line. Line book. So I'm testing testing my setup here. All right. So today I'm going to be working on simply drawing characters. That's going to be my main focus. And I want to make sure you guys can see this, but I have my sketchbook, and it's a pretty big sketchbook. This thing. Um. So my plan is to kind of draw some kind of funny, quirky, and silly characters. Um, and they're going to be focused, I think, on a lot of animal type characters like I've done already. But this one's going to be mostly for copy line pages in the future. And this is a good way to actually learn maybe a bit of like how I, my process goes for um, exploring characters. So how I start. Uh, this is where you get like a how to draw book and it's different than than my type of book. My type of book gives you uh, the thing to draw and you get to um, just draw. You don't have to worry about constructing anything or creating anything. So the first thing I do is actually create like a head shape. Now the character is going to be looking um, that way a little bit. And I want the head to be pretty big and the body to be small. And Already, I have no idea what I'm drawing. I, I'm exploring. Uh, so I create a, a foundation, really. And put a couple legs on him. Legs go where legs go. Arms go where arms go. And these kind of choices now are going to influence what kind of character this is. So how his posture is. You know, the way that his feet are touching the ground, or like how he's holding himself or herself. And this is where I'm starting to kind of ponder what I might uh, want this to be. I like to draw birds, I like to draw, you know, bears and things, and I might need to actually look up a picture of something like that. And it just gives me a bit of a reminder of what these things look like. It's actually quite difficult to, to know how to draw everything from your mind. You have to, you actually have to pay attention quite a lot and draw quite a lot, create the, a pretty extensive library of things in your head. So, I think I'm gonna make a big bear character. And he's looking a bit angry and I'm, I'm okay with that. So everyone that's coming in now, just so you know, I'm just drawing today. I'm not actually going to be working on a copy line um, page. So I work in little details like the mouth, the eyes, and I'm feeling it out as I go. I'm seeing his expression a little bit and I'm going, okay. So this is a bear. This is how he's kind of standing. He's a bit angry, so I'll give him a bit of an angry or you know, defensive posture. And then I just, I let my mind kind of wander and I think about, well, what kind of character would that be? What kind of, uh, you know, I can personify and think about what, what people um, might do. And so one thing I just thought of was like, maybe, maybe he does karate. Maybe he's like a martial artist bear. So naturally, you gotta draw a headband on them. But they get these big, big fluffy ears, so I'm gonna make sure that's on the right side of this, this headband. And I'm not gonna give him um, human style hair. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just gonna give him like, almost like regular bear fur, because I want him to really read as much of like a bear as I can. 
and I, I make my construction lines kind of light. I'm not drawing super hard because I want to be able to erase. And I have this kneaded eraser, which is a stretchy eraser. And that just allows me to press down and take away some of the, the lines. So I might look up um, a bear. I have my laptop here in front of me, so I can look up what, what a bear looks like. Um, I could look up what what uh, karate gi looks like. And I can't show you necessarily, um, just because where my camera's pointed down. But trust me, I'm looking at some karate gi. And I'm already trying to figure out what, what I like about my picture and what needs to kind of shift a little bit. And I'm trying to exaggerate a little bit. So he's standing here, he's looking a bit, bit tough. Means I actually do want his shoulders to be kind of more defined. I want to make sure um, you kind of read this as gi, which is what karate folk wear. So these characters, I've done this a bunch already. I've made a whole bunch of characters for for my next Kobe line project. Um, and so I kind of have a rule set for them already. I like to make sure their bodies are smaller than their heads. So they're sillier, makes them silly. Um, they're a bit more like uh, cartoonish when I do that. And the whole time I'm thinking about just a couple things really, because he has a story. So I'm thinking about, okay, well who is he? I know he's a bear, I know he's doing karate. I know he's... Uh, standing ready to uh ready to fight perhaps and i might make sure his claws are out because he's he is a bear make him look a little more dangerous at least with one of his hands maybe even his mouth Maybe he likes the challenge in front of him. Like, maybe he likes a good fight, you know. So yesterday, during my stream, uh, the, the camera shut off at some point. And it, uh, it was hard to get it back on. So if that happens again today, I'm just, I'll let you know, I'm gonna just put it back online. And you might have to, might have to find it again. So looking up references is pretty important if you're going to draw something like this. There's a bit of a character to it, especially if it's something you're not really familiar with. Like, I don't, I can't remember how to draw bears very well. I love bears, but I don't draw bears very often. And I also don't know karate very well. At least not well enough to, uh, to draw, like, their uniform. So there's many levels when I'm drawing something like this. Like at the end of the day, I'm just trying to have fun, but it, it really is a lot of work to uh, to do something for a copy line. Because I'm thinking about like what people are gonna draw in the end, and so I have to kind of design these drawings uh, to match the experience that people are gonna gonna have from it. So I'm kind of designing designing a couple things at once. I'm gonna make him a bit sneakier. So he's a little more shifty eyed. I 
So feel free to draw along with me if you like. If you have questions, um, you can send me those too. Like, feel free just to ask me in chat, I'll try to answer them. Uh, but this this whole day is going to be just about like drawing characters like this, how I set them up, how I kind of go through the, my process of uh, creating, I suppose, just a character. So the cool thing, the fun, one of the fun things about crowdy people and like headbands is they have this like little lasso bit that kind of flows off the back because it, it's rope, right? Make a knot, tie it, you got two ends. Genesis cartooning is so fun and cute. I definitely like that Kobe embraces that style. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think it's it's been freeing actually to create Copia for that reason. You know, I really like drawing cartoons myself. It might just be because they're they're not as serious. So I play it by ear a bit when I'm doing something like this. Um, I definitely didn't set out to say like I'm gonna create a a bear. <laughs> I might have set out to draw an animal, but you can set out to draw a bear. A lot of times I'm really just exploring, and I'm letting uh, inspiration guide me. So I'm just adding some accents to try to keep it interesting. I have these little triangles in the corner of armpits because that's where cloth tends to fold. I think Guy has this kind of like thick collar part. And the thing I forgot here is they, they do tie this part as well into a knot. So then, I might emphasize this part. And I can think about how the knot actually works. You can you look up a picture of a knot. If you really want it to read correctly, as like a real thing, then looking up a picture of um, what you're drawing is pretty important. And Jenna, if you can hear me, I think Megan's jumping around a lot. Got my daughter upstairs above me, making making a good amount of racket. So I'm still trying to just think about like fur at this point because bears are just full of fur, right? That's really these big blubbery creatures that survive very harsh winters. So that's it. I mean, the only thing I could think to make this f a lot more fun for me would be maybe to give him glasses because maybe he's like really sure of himself. So let's see, we'll make him even cooler. Give him some shades. So I usually draw the lenses, you figure out how to make it look cool. So there's a bar here. And I really don't know how sunglasses work on characters like this. It's supposed to go over their ear, but the ear is like way up there. So I'm gonna add a highlight in here. And now I'm going to shade it in, just because uh, it's going to help me in the end. So that's one character. 
Uh, I don't know his name. I don't know what he does. It's kind of fun. So I'm going to move on to something else. And uh, sometimes I look around for ideas. Sometimes I just kind of like, I, I wing it. I like to draw birds because they're pretty easy to start with. I like to do kind of random shapes and I like to push it if I, if I think he's hunched over. Maybe I'll just roll with it. Give him a big hunch, general head shape. And I am gonna draw a beak on this one. But I'm gonna make it a kind of big beak and I'm gonna make him happy. And it doesn't really matter at what point you start refining. Uh, you could be a stickler and really try to like flesh out the, the general shape overall. Um, but if you get a good sense of of a feeling and you want to like kind of run with that feeling like this happy beak i, I kind of want to see what that looks like a little bit before i make my other choices and then i'm adding these lines which are adding some three dimension to them and i think i want to make him kind of chill so i'm gonna give him like kind of chill eyes relaxed eyebrows and maybe he's got like He's lifting one eyebrow higher because he's looking looking off in that direction. Similarly to a copuline page, you know, I take my time. I'm not rushing it. Um, Although, I don't know, maybe to you it looks like I am. And I draw this kind of a realistic eye, like, the other way to draw eyes is very, just very cartoony. But this is more of a real eye, like a human eye. Kind of looks like this. Pretty realistic, so what I find when I put it on, on uh, animals like this, Brings it to life, makes it a lot more believable. You can connect to it a lot more. And I think sometimes I just like to look at them, get a feel for it. Who are they? Let it kind of speak to me. You know, like remembering cartoons of, you know, like Donald Duck or uh, Goof Troop, I think it was. I think chickens have almost like reptilian ears. They don't, it's just like a hole. And then this, uh, this hump on his back, I'm actually going to make it a backpack because he looks he looks like a younger guy. And I want to be holding his backpack with his, his hands, like uh, he's holding the strap. So the other one might come out here like this. Now figuring out how to put things in front and behind and like know everything that's happening here, it's, it's definitely out there but I just say wing it like if you're if you're ambitious and you want to try all this just go for it you can keep the hands as like a solid shape you don't have to uh, you don't have to make it so realistic and complex that it's beyond you keep it keep it simple If you forget how to draw backpacks, just look up a backpack on Google. I'm gonna give a give him hands, but because he is a chicken, I know that they're like supposed to be wings. So I'm gonna make his whole arm kind of like uh, have feathers on it, like a wing.
Oh, and obviously, he's probably wearing a t-shirt. Don't be afraid to redo stuff. I totally just erased both the hands just to redo them because I wasn't uh, wasn't happy with how they were going. I gotta let my cat out. Hold on. If you guys have questions about what I'm doing, just uh, just let me know. So I'm still gonna make his shirt shorter, his legs kind of shorter, because he is uh, supposed to be a tiny guy. But I want to give him. I think I'm gonna make him really kind of cool pants. See if I can make some cool shoes. Like what would a, a hip guy look like? You know, real hip, like real hippie with the farmer on it. I could try. <laughs> Let's see a picture of the farmer here. I'll look it up. So Glenn's saying I should make it look like the farmer, which is one of our pages. I'll show you guys. Let's see, I'm just flipping through the book here. Oh, is he? There he is. Okay. So this guy. So maybe we'll make him the character on my little bird's uh, shirt. So I'm just going to draw the uh, pretty much the basic shapes. The farmer page was pretty great because it was very a very minimal page. So this will actually be an even more simplified version of it. Because I don't want to make it as detailed as this, even though this is simple. I, I just think at this resolution, this size, um, could get lost. So keeping it simple might be the way to go. Now, this is going to be a copia style image. I'm going to need to not have these loose lines here and this is more for me to work out. And what I'm doing here actually does add dimension to it. And when you have parts like these backpack straps, I'm, I'm always thinking like, okay, I know this is a backpack strap. <laughs> I know that. Uh, I'm saying that's what it is. But that doesn't mean that anyone that looks at it really will get it. You know, they might. They really might get it right away. But because I, it's hard for me to tell, I need to do my best to push it as much as I can so that at least it's obvious that it's a backpack. It's at least a bag on his back. So I'll put a handle on top. I want to make sure there's like, uh, kind of like a square style to it. Maybe a flap that folds over. I might put like uh, a pocket on it. A little button on top. And that's, that's kind of the, the trick. How do I make these look more like pants? You know, what kind of pants are they? 
Well, they're not jeans because they have this little uh, thing on the bottom. They're a bit too poofy to be jeans. And so all the time, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, so I know these are like sweatpants. Sweatpants might have like, like because I, actually I'm thinking about the color already. I'm thinking like gray sweatpants with like a bright green line on the side. So I'll draw these kind of Adidas style lines on the side. Um, the bottoms, I think they're, how do I say it, they're um, elastic. So they're kind of adhering to his feet a little bit. So I'll draw a little, uh, the start of little feet. Because I think I want to give him shoes. You know, I, I kind of want to give him nice, uh, teenage style shoes, which is like big fat laces, uh, whatever that's called, the big lip thing there, big tongue, and big, uh, big sole. All the while just like thinking about how I can keep the energy in it. And that's a lot of the, the line style, maybe even the, um, you know, the, the, the flow of it. So it's not just like all straight lines. I want it to kind of flow a little bit and, and feel a bit more dynamic and fluid. And then that translates onto the character. Susie says she's enjoying it. Awesome, Susie. I'm happy you are. Because drawing, drawing is really fun. It's, it's about being creative and exploring. Potential. So now we look at this and we go, okay, so this is teenager, he's got some cool sneakers. The, the potential is here to draw. Now I can like add things to the sneakers if I want. Um, you know, you can add familiar logos that you're, you're uh, aware of, or you can make up your own logo, you know, rather than the Nike swoosh or the Adidas like triangle thing. You can, you can come up with something that's like plays on those. Like we put a, a human farmer on his shirt because he's a chicken. A, a human boy might have a chicken on his shirt. Get it? And because I don't like just this big area, I put a little highlight there because he has a round head. Same with his pants there. think he's pretty good so I'm just gonna start a new one move on pretty quick I don't know what else I could do if you guys can think of anything else I'm not seeing here feel free to let me know I might go back later and play with uh, with more so now we have a karate bear who hopefully reads like a karate bear he might not he's not he doesn't have a big body like a bear does so that might be hit or miss doesn't necessarily matter to me um, because not everything has to be successful. But I like the chicken. The chicken turned out pretty great. Let's see. Um, a bat would be pretty cool. Because bats, bats are so weird looking. Well, maybe I could let you guys pick something too. How about somebody list an animal? Uh, we'll see if we can make a character out of one. I'm going to clean up these lines really quick because I get smudging after a little while working around it and this I have a kneaded eraser I mentioned earlier that is great for you kind of just pinch it get the, the side you want do a little bit of fine erasing Oh yeah, Jenna says she noticed the Kobe page where the rabbits has a bunny on the t-shirt with a human on it. Sorry, yeah, a bunny that has a t-shirt with a human on it. I know, I thought it was hilarious. Glenn says a wiener dog. Alright, that's a dash hound. Alright. 
just looking up dash hound. Dash hounds are pretty straightforward. But how I translate that into a character will be interesting because these are uh, turned into a humanoid form. Uh, but if I were to do a wiener dog, I would still want it to have that wiener dog shape. So I'm going to start with the head. Try to rough in maybe ears. And then wiener dogs are long, of course. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I draw it really light at first. I'm not committing to anything. I'm kind of like saying, okay, so this is what I got. Hmm. They got, they got really stubby little legs, don't they, up front? So I start thinking already about like how to give him character and I'm saying or her give her character so I raise the eyebrows a little bit I'm gonna start playing with uh, you know making it a bit silly but now I'm thinking about like okay if I have a character like a this this kind of supposedly interesting character and they're just standing there then just standing around isn't very interesting on its own. Um, I think what would have to happen is it's what the wiener dog is wearing that really says like who they are, what they do, you know, and that's, that's character building, I think. I feel like these front legs are gonna be challenging because they're so stumpy. <laughs> so let's see. They're really like, the way the genetics are for this animal, it's like, it's wild. Hmm. So I don't know where I'm going with it. I really don't. One little, one little thing at a time. Characters come into life. You, uh, you know, I, and I do this bit of like random characterization, but you can have very solid ideas. Like I want to make a business person, or like a, you know, a character that plays sports, and maybe you have a funny joke on on how that uh, that might come about. So this is a good time to um, step back a little bit. So I'm gonna pull back some of my lines. I'm gonna pat on them a little bit with this eraser. And lighten them up a little bit. I think I should give, if this is a girl, nice lush eyebrows. Round out the nose a little bit, not so intense. Yeah, Lucy. Glenn has a wiener dog. So if Lucy were um, 
cartoon character? What would she do for a living? So I think what I'm gonna do, just because it just struck me, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a saddle. And then I'm gonna figure out what might ride on Lucy. I might even do a gnome actually. I've, I've been thinking about gnomes a little more lately. And gnomes are great. They're little wood woodland creatures, little tiny people. So I draw a little stubby gnome on, on the back here. They got pointy hats. I'm gonna give them big eyebrows. And uh, I think a big nose. I did, I do have a gnome in the book actually. Oh no, I have like a bunch of gnomes in the book. <laughs> I guess I like drawing gnomes. So he's gotta have his arms up. He's holding the reins on Lucy the his, his dog, who he, he rides around through the wilderness, and she's a very feminine uh, steed, which I think he would he should make like a head some headgear for. Would it be a pointy hat too? Though I don't know. So I want to emphasize that she's happy. And I'm trying to figure out where the reins go, because usually they have like a thing in their mouth. I'm, I'm debating if that's what I want for, for Lucy, because it, it's, it's got to be uncomfortable. So then, I mean, you can do the logical thing and just put it in there. Um, or you can try to solve that, and see it as a problem, right? Because I don't want to demean Lucy. And I, want, I don't want to demean the dog in my image. Um, because I want it to be a very pleasant image. Very fun to look at. Not uh, sad in, in that way. So I don't have to solve it right away. I'm just gonna hold off for a sec and ponder it, what what the potentials are. Because sometimes things just come to me and then it makes sense. So I already want to Rework the face a bit. I like I like mostly what I have there. I just want to uh, rework it a little. Oh, I've got it. Okay, so a gnome tries to hide. So he really doesn't want to be seen. He's he's taking care of nature. His job is to uh, nurture plants and animals and and take care of the forest. So if he's trying not to be seen, he has a little dash hound to run him around in the forest. Uh, I think he would disguise her with like flowers and leaves. 
So maybe she's wearing like, you know, some headdress he made her with sticks and, you know, uh, nice pretty flowers. And the, the flowers would really complement the femininity. And then the story here is that, uh, yeah, you have a dog that really is in partnership with a um, little gnome. And the gnome is not uh, a bad owner. It's a very good owner. Or you could even just say good friend. So that's him and his nice little beard. Nice little simple jolly face. I can give it a close-up too if you if you want to see. It's very simple. I'm drawing it at three quarters view, which means I can see three quarters of his face. Three fourths for those who need to know. And it's a lot more dynamic. Three quarter view. I'm not going to put a lot of attention on his hands. Uh, I don't really need to define them all that well. There just need to be hints of fingers and, you know, they're, they're little balled up fists. That's all. If I were up close or it was important to see all the fingers, then for sure it would make sense then. And I'm going to keep his hat, I'm not going to do like a straight on just a triangle for his hat. I want it to be a little more organic, so I'm like keeping it a bit um, wobbly. Right, so that would feel more organic. That's if it were uh, really made of cloth. And it makes me think of like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. His hat was pretty much like that, except it had a big brim on it which gnome hats do not. Um, so the other thing I might do, because Lucy's so long, she's this really long type of dog, right? Kind of stretched out like a wiener. A uh, hot dog for the layman's in the audience. Um, so he's hoofing it around the forest on this this dog. There's a lot of room here actually for like a like a backpack, maybe a bed roll, which is uh, when you roll up your bed. So let's put that on here. Nice bed roll, which is pretty well just a spiral. Looks kind of like a, a shell. Now that goes over the dog, over the dog's back. It's probably strapped down, so do a strap over it like that. A bit like sushi. Okay, there's the saddle. You have maybe a bit of cloth under it. Maybe he carries like an assortment of herbs. Like I said, he takes care of the forest and the animals. And maybe he's like a doctor. So I got a little bit, a couple leaves there. I want to make sure that the lines are not uh, crisscrossing unless it makes sense. If these were transparent leaves, it would make sense. They are not though. He can have some stuff sticking out here, like so. Maybe, maybe he's got, maybe he's packing some, some uh, blueberries. And this is a good way to transport them. I don't know, see? I'm not a gnome. Let's see, there's a little smidge here of Okay, so those who are joining now, I'm just drawing characters today. And you can see a few that I've drawn. Very fun. 
And I'm always just trying to figure out what the story is, who they are, what they could be, and uh, playing with it, you know, trying to define everything. So I said, uh, maybe, maybe Lucy the dog here, the steed of our little gnome friend, let's call him uh, uh, Twig. And so Twig here, uh, she has a headdress that he made. It's got to be made with, you know, flowers and leaves and things. And so I haven't really defined it all super clearly. I'm slowly building it up. And I'm, I'm curious if he would have built other stuff for her. So I want to work on these, these arms a bit, the, the front paws, because they are actually kind of challenging. Because the anatomy of one of these dogs is, is tricky. They're, they're stubby little uh, paws. So here, I'm, I'm going to try to work one up, see if I can do it well enough. They kind of look like they have like dwarfism for dogs, but I know they don't. It's just they're like, yeah, they've been, I know, I heard ages ago they were genetically um, kind of altered, so they were bred to kind of go into like foxholes or something, something like that. You know, they either went after foxes or uh, mongoose or something along those lines. So here I'm just adding to that idea that maybe she's wearing some kind of disguise around her her neck, um, up to her head. It's made of leaves, it's made of twigs. So I'm putting in leaf shapes, putting in little like sticks like that. And I might actually make her a bit more dynamic and bend a paw. Just like a horse would do or a dog would do if it were injured. Now that, that gives her a bit more character. Now I don't know if that's exactly how I want to place it. Maybe some of the lines won't work because she's, uh, as far as the anatomy goes, the shoulder's right here. So if it looks a bit weird, could be just the anatomy, could be something like that. And that's where I need to concede if I want it to really, really work in the end. You know, the way the, the paw is facing really matters because she has to put weight on it, you know? She's, her back paws are down here, so her front weight has, is, is all on this, this foot. So it actually needs to come out a little bit more If anyone has any questions, you feel free. No obligation. Just saying. I'm here. Still have not figured out how to connect uh, Lucy. I th I'm thinking of just doing a bit of like a muzzle, um, but not a really uh, intense one. Because if uh, if he's riding her, she's agreeing to it. So it's not forced, you know, labor. Which is tends to be what it is with a horse. They have this thing in their mouth the whole time. It's kind of screwy. But that's how they work. So I'll put it around the face like this. Maybe over the snout. Makes it look like a kind of belly dancer. <laughs> this like mask looking thing, which maybe I'll do like some things hanging off it just for fun. Make it look very like tribal. Muzzles, muzzles always have like straps and, and things in a lot of places. I'm not going to sit here and try to work out the logistics of it. I don't think that's the important part.
Okay, so I think I'm gonna continue. I wanna put a couple more bags on the back here. So this character, it's less cartoony, even though it is, and it's more actually into fantasy. It's more of a fantasy type image. And then I think finally back here, I'm gonna put some more leaves as if there is maybe a, a bigger um, bit of armor on her back. Maybe there's straps for it around her, uh, her arm and under her, her tummy. Alright, that's pretty awesome. I think I like that. So there's Lucy. So, I'm not really going to stop, I'm just going to keep going. So a lot of my uh, ideas kind of stand from, they stem from the initial, um, you know, pose. So yeah, I'm actually kind of exploring um, more of a confident, maybe arrogant pose. Finger out going, A. Big tall head. Advanced Pictionary, yeah. Well, and it's funny because of the way I work through it, someone says it's Advanced Pictionary, just so you know. Um, sometimes the way I work through these things is I don't know what I'm doing, but it works out in the long run. So I, I draw noses that I feel like drawing. Uh, I draw eyebrows and expressions and poses that I just vibing in the moment. And I'm kind of, so I'm kind of following my inspiration, which I think is really important. So this guy is, is actually pretty human. It's going to be a human. I drew the mouth and I drew a human nose. some high cheekbones so I might do really intense jawline and 
probably a goatee because it's like a basketball player so that can work and that way the long the long face can be a little bit longer and still make sense the cool thing about basketball players sometimes is they look <laughs> ridiculous they have all these like weird face guards and stuff so I'll do the natural thing and I'll Google uh, you know basketball player headgear I'm not even sure what it's called it's like uh, glasses Yeah, oh man, that's what it is. It's goggles. <laughs> uh, so Jenna says, uh, what kind of hair are you going to give him? Depends. Um, I suppose depends. Probably short hair, maybe a little curly. So the goggles, I think they got it. They have to be ridiculous. Like they have to be like alien goggles. Cause they always seem like these seem way over the top. So if you're drawing clear goggles, you can just draw a shape and then draw a couple highlights tends to work pretty well so yeah now I'm starting to think about oh, his hairline and what kind of uh, hair to give him and I always like afros uh, I'm kind of like sad that you don't see him very much anymore so I celebrate him when I can And then it's a, it's a debate of what kind of ears to give them to. Do you give them really big goofy ears or really just kind of small? I usually just try to read my picture a bit and see like what the balance should be on that. So I'm using my kneaded eraser to get rid of some of these construction lines. So a lot of you that are watching this um, know about Copia Books. What I'm doing here uh, is something that I'm going to do. I'm going to be, you know, live streaming a bunch. So I plan to do just regular drawing like this, where you can hang out and doodle your own thing or try to draw what I'm drawing, which is which is great. Uh, otherwise, other days I'm going to be drawing directly from the Copia Line drawing book. I might work toward building pictures just for the live stream that we all can kind of print off and, and draw together because that might actually be quite fun too. So drawing the insides of ears. That took me a long time to figure out. Ears are very complex. Uh, just like feet. Feet are super complex. I, that's, just, that's just something to mention. I don't know if I can give you the secret to it yet. So he's pointing off here at somebody. I'm gonna I'm changing this arm because I think I want him to be spinning the basketball on one finger, but I gotta figure out where I want the basketball to be first. So I put it in the air near him. Then I need to put the finger under it, right? Figure out the other fingers and you can look up your hand or you can take a picture uh, of your hand in, in the right position. I've been drawing for so long that I seem to be able to uh, draw pretty well, like intuitively, knowing where things should go. For the most part, that's not to say I don't struggle. I definitely struggle. Something Sometimes you just get something in a position and you're like, I do not know 
how to make this look right. But thumbs and fingers, they're really complex. They have little moving parts. They got lots and lots of bones. So if you're going to use a reference, feel free. Don't feel bad about it. That's a great way to, uh, to do it well. But I'm going to draw the, the little segments. And each finger has three segments, so you kind of have to work that in a little bit. But you don't need to draw it all like that. Um, you just kind of got to work out the meat, which is what I originally did. I drew like kind of like your fundamental shapes. All the other fingers curl in. So that kind of works. I'm not super happy with it. It looks a little bit wonky. I might try to simplify it because, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'm just thinking about it too much. And I'm totally okay with that. Like, it could be that I was going a bit three-dimensional and that's exactly why it's not working. So I need to dial it back. the whole point is that this character is a bit extreme it's a he's a bit ridiculous and in the end i might just leave it i might come back later at some point later in time where it'll make sense to me but that doesn't mean i can't still work on it and develop the other parts here and that's a that's a good example of an area that's actually a challenge right so let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's so silly. So now I'm trying to push it a little bit more into like coming at us. It was foreshortening. Because it could be it was too much like this uh, and not enough like this. And already I'm, I'm liking this more. It's just more dynamic. It's more interesting. It's still not perfect, but um, yeah, now it definitely feels more interesting to me. Awesome. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give them these little kind of like dread things in the back. Which is usually just dance my, my pencil around. It's looking awesome. Alright, so I got about 15 more minutes, I figure. I'll draw till 7.30. Um, and that'll probably be roughly what I do for the next uh, week or so. I'll just come on in the evening and, and draw for an hour, uh, hour and a half, something like that. And if people want to join me, they do. And if they don't, well, that's fine. I don't care. What do I care? And guess what? I don't. JK, I love having you here. Okay, so basketball lines, I think it's uh, one circle, one circle, and then one straight line. 
and that's a basketball. And this is where drawing a perfect circle uh, doesn't really matter. You don't have to draw a perfect circle here. Because he's, he's so much a character, um, it's better in some ways. You could say it might be more make more sense if it wasn't perfect. But you can also argue that making it absolutely perfect is very stylistic and, and cool as well. Now, I think... Maybe I'm not getting it right. Let me look. I'm gonna look at a. I'm gonna look up a reference picture of a basketball. Well, yeah. I think the only thing I'm missing is there's a line through it here. So if this is spinning in the air, I wonder how I can make it make it appear like it's spinning. I think the only thing I can think at the moment is to draw like kind of swooshes around it. But that'll be something that I would define better uh, when I actually vectorize it, which I'm probably not going to be doing on streaming. I think I'm just going to be designing some characters and. I'm having some fun that way. So he probably does need some shoes, some proper shoes. I don't think I'm going to define them like like this other uh, other shoe here. I think I'll keep them simple and black. That way, uh, you know, more of the attention is on on him up here, and I could say it adds to his his style that his feet aren't uh, where the attention's at, you know. So because people are going to draw this, I'm trying to keep all the areas kind of interested, and I'm getting some smudging on it. I I personally don't really care about the smudging part. Um, that's not going to matter me to me in the end, because like I said, these a lot of these are going for copiography style so then I'll uh, I'm more interested in the line work and what people are going to be drawing so I want to keep that interesting and uh, make sure it's it's dynamic all over so I'm gonna give him like a little wristband like a sweatband thing probably on both of them Got a pretty gnarly fingernail. <laughs> so now he's calling someone out. He, he might be saying, I'm taking it to uh, slam dunk. I'm gonna dunk this slam, he says. He's uber confident. He's, he's so confident. That he's arrogant. Okay, so I got ten more minutes. Um, we've done four awesome characters: Kung Fu Bear, High School Bird, High School Chicken. We've got uh, Gnome in the Woods with uh, Lucy the the Dashound in her camouflage, and we've got uh, arrogant, overconfident um, basketball pro. Not sure what uh, what else I could do right now. I think tomorrow I might do I might do a copia page just to mix it up, and uh, you know the following day I might go back to this. And I think if I do or when I do, uh, I'm gonna try to bring a couple ideas of something I want to accomplish. Because uh, you know the goal here today was just come up with some characters, but to do it in a way that is like, hey, I can just like explore and find interesting things. And I did, but 
if I do a little bit of planning, a little bit of forethought, then maybe that's a bit easier. Maybe. Um, so anyway, I really appreciate you stopping by and watching, and, and I look forward to hanging out with you again. Goodbye.